Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about Mast of the Monster Whale. So, Mast of the Monster Whale, which also goes by, let me double check here, just to make sure, Dungeon Maker in Europe. And was published by uh, Wising Star in Europe as well as Master of the Monster Whale was published by Alice. But Master of the Monster Whale is a DSRPG with a heavy emphasis on farming and dungeon building. While this has RPG mechanics, it's farming's a pawn. Anyway. The story is about a young boy seeking his calling in life, but mistakenly finds a living shovel. Because that's every day, Corns. That binds to him, so he is given the dungeon diggle job. Because, well, he's bound to it. Uh, he was originally sent to go find it, and he got bound to it, so he kind of got stuck with the job. The main story events happen with the mail. And the shopkeepers will give you some side quests as you progress lower into your dungeon. Worm, um, wombs are used. Worm. <laughs> wombs are used to build your dungeons as you build places for them to sleep, eat, entertainment, and some related to elements. You know, like giant fireball things might like you know a womb with a fireplace versus a womb with a fountain. You know. So, you're basically essentially creating a little indoor motel for your little monster friends. But this ends up giving you a lot of control over the spawns because the monsters um, mainly spawn in wombs. There are a few that spawn outside the wombs here and there, but you can see them on your map. So, you, you get a lot of control how they spawn. And what the floor will give you a limit number of a type of monsters to spawn. Now, this control is needed due to needing to farm the gear. Because you can control what types of monsters in different rooms. You know, like giant fireball, or firing suits, armors, maybe. Things you'll find in, like, fireplace rooms and... Like in the garden, you'll find vegetable plant life things a lot of times, or things that eat vegetable type things. You know, you, you have a number of things in there. So you get this control and how you farm gear and food from the drop weight. Now basically, you can encounter up to a group of three enemies, two or one. Having three enemies, the last mob you kill has a 100% chance of dropping one of the loot items. Two, you get like a kind of a 50-ish, I'm not 100% sure, that's just an estimated opinion. And then 1%, uh, not 1%, when you fight one enemy, you have a very low chance of them dropping something, but they can still drop something. And you will get the majority of your gear and food from doing this. And it is a necessity. Food is needed due to there is no normal level system. For a game that is an RPG, there is no normal level system. To grow, you must get stats from the meals you make. Now, each human character, which you'll end up with two human characters eventually, can eat one meal at the end of the day. A day system basically you know you start in the morning in town you can purchase wombs and things go into the dungeon do your dungeon business when you leave it becomes later in the day you can make a meal and then go sleep and start the process again while most of the gear will be from farming a few quests and dig blocks there are a few dig blocks with unique rewards of gear and uh, money in that but uh, there are a few quests that will give you special items. And some can last longer and others are more short term. You also get a pet slime who will make your party complete with your... You will have one additional human join you and your pet slime who joins you. Now the slime, unlike the human characters, doesn't survive on meals, he doesn't eat food. Instead, he copies monsters' body parts. Now, this will give him stat gain spells and unique attacks and moves that he can do depending on the monster parts. Now, 
the important thing to convey here is when your monster wants a spell, it's a permanent thing he gets to keep. So even if you change to a new spell, you get to remember those. However, unique attacks do not get to be kept, and they will go away as you change parts that they'll associate with. But essentially, as long as you keep going with the better stats, essentially you're pretty much good. Um, certain parts can allow usage of equipment also, while other parts can't, so that's something to also keep in mind with your choice. Is that one stat gain in strength going to be worth better than the 10 points in attack he gets from the weapon he holds? Now, it would have been nice if there was kind of like a plus version of a lot of the items as many of the items or uh, many of the enemies and their items will repeat for many of the floors. A few get a few altered versions of them that have either new loot or a few with some of the old loot mixed in. But a lot of times as you get deeper you're gonna fight a lot of familiar mobs and the loot is old. So the gear is worthless, so it's our max cell. And if they don't have like any food or something really unique that's still useful, they'll pretty much just waste your time. I think if they introduced it a system that upgraded gear or some of the food items as you were depending on like how deep you are in the dungeon. You know, like a pig monster, which is a monster you get to fight since the very first floor down, you know, 15 floors. It might have been nice to get, like, a slightly better version of his meat or something, which is the weakest type of meat in the game, food-wise. <sighs> but that's just... That's just a slight opinion now. But, um... This, this also brings up a problem that to me it really reminds me of Final Fantasy Legend of all things or aka Saga 1 for the original Game Boy. Now if you've never played Final Fantasy Legend aka Saga 1 you had humans, mutants which were called mystics in the Japanese version and monsters in the original game the sequel added robots but that's not what's important. What's important here is the humans. Humans level up with a special stat item that you can find or buy. Now something that was abusive in the original game was you actually got more by buying the lesser version of the item. The higher versions gave you more of the stat in one usage, but the price was usually way, way more than buying the weak version of the item. So a way to get really good stats was to get shitloads of gold, go way back to a starting area in the game that sells the old stat items, and just buy tons of those, use them all because you have limited inventory, and then stock again on them over and over again, and you would get more stats for a cheaper price in almost all cases than buying the high stat item that may give you like five in the stat but it costed shitloads of money and I feel like this is a similar problem in this game like as I mentioned the pig has one of the weakest meats in the game it gives you strength with some of the meals that you make with it However, you could, like, essentially go back to the first floor, make tons of rooms that have pigs usually be the thing that appears in them, and you could just, you know, obviously at high levels, you'd be able to slaughter through crap loads of pigs really fast and get all kinds of meat, and you could just pass several days and get tons of weak improvements of strength all at one go, as opposed to spending a lot of time trying to make more complicated meals where you need more types of food for more different enemies, and while you get a stronger bonus, you could argue the time you spent there could have just got you like 10 meats from the first floor and go spend a whole bunch of nights in that, so... There's kind of a weird balancement there, you could argue that. 
but wait though you do get bell spells that uh, will allow you to make the farming faster so like I uh, you know you'll get hit all spells so like I said you could go find a group of weak pigs you know just slaw them all in one go and make that process really fast and I feel like you wouldn't feel that you need to do that if you got slightly better. I mean, this is a subjective opinion, you know. There's different ways you can look at this. But I think if the items kind of improved over time, I don't think you would have to feel to do that occasionally. Because at times some of the meals are annoying to get all the ingredients. Fucking clams, man. Your goal remains the same for each floor as you progress through the game. You need to set either a certain amount of wounds, type of wounds, get a certain amount of monsters to spawn on the floor, or a combination of things, to get a boss monster to spawn, and you'll kick his ass, make a hole to the next floor, and continue. Building is very simple, there's no real complications. A few different rooms have different doors in a few different ways. Some have doors on every wall and some have one door or two doors. So you can make a few different uh, pathways and crosswalks and that. But essentially, you got one block rooms that either have one door or door everywhere or that. And then three by three blocked rooms that may have multiple doors or only one door to go in. It, it depends on the type of room. Like farms have a exit on each side of the wall, but a dojo only has one way in. Like, it varies. But the layout is going to be a pawn because number you need three mobs to join in a combat to get a 100% chance on a drop. So you want to face the doors towards one spot for you to walk in so the three enemies will charge at you. So you'll have to lay out your dungeon efficiently if you want to get the most out of things. There is an elemental system because as I mentioned there were elemental wombs but to be honest, it really was almost a non-existent thing to me in my playthrough. Fire or not, it, it really reminds me of, um, what was that FromSoft game on 360? Um, I can't remember. It's, it's basically where the elements are weak to each other. Fire and ice hold each other and... There are a few items that say water or ice, and I'm not sure if that's a translation error, because all the magic, I believe, is ice, and so on items will tell you, like, protection against water or that, so I'm not sure if that was a translation issue, because I don't, I don't remember any magic being water. But fire and ice uh, hold each other, so they're each other's weakness, and the light is for undead creatures, so there's nothing really complicated, and it's almost a non-existent thing in the game for most. There's only a few floors that'll pure one element here and there, so it's not a very common roadblock. Basically, as long as you're not using their element against them, you're pretty much fine. Now, the story is very basic. N Obviously, I'm talking about the American Atlas localization. I can't comment on the Rising Star localization of the European version, but I feel it was mostly cut and dry. Most jokes felt like a big miss to me, but um, this is a child-friendly game. There's no perverted or inappropriate line, so if you're looking for something uh, more for your kid, uh, there's nothing inappropriate in here. Music, you um, interestingly get some music unlocked that you can play when you're doing your dungeon building. But most of it doesn't really stand out to me. But it is nice that you can pick, you know, from a few songs. So you can change it up and not listen to the same dungeon theme over and over and over again. Though it's a bit of a shame you can't change the battle theme. Because, you know, a lot of times you'll be going in and out of combat again. So, you know, you might have, like... 10 seconds between uh, one battle to another battle, so a lot of times it also seems kind of pointless at the same time. Uh, the art isn't anything mind-blowing, and as mentioned before, enemies do get reskinned, reused, and keep appearing as you go deeper. 
so I wouldn't expect anything too amazing there. And I didn't encounter any bugs, but in general I feel like the pacing on the layer floors, like I said, where you'll find a lot of the same fucking old gear and stuff, gets really slow and dry. The pacing really drags out, because the big old problem, besides just trying to develop your characters, is gold. A lot of the later rooms, very expensive, and you need lots of good money. Which could have been a useful thing for having like plus versions of older gear or that, but there was also a post game to the original story after the quest where you can keep going deeper in the dungeon. But honestly, while it has a few new bosses and things, it's really just a repeat of what you've already did. I mean, it is more story. But I'll, I'll get into that with spoilers. So the price range, if you're looking for a complete version of this game, you're probably looking at about 20 plus dollars. But if you don't care about a loose cart, as this is a original DS cart, it can be about as low as 5 bucks in America at least. GameStop has it for $4.99, there are people on Amazon selling it for $4.99, and high obviously with cases all woke and all that stuff. And uh, there is no digital version of this game, so physical or, you know, legitimate copies, physical is your only choice. Would I recommend this game? This is an excellent game if you're looking for something to eat up a little of your time. You can save anywhere. Yeah. Basically, as long as you're not talking to anyone, you can save anywhere. You can save in the middle of your dungeon, you can save in the middle of town. It's a great game for pull ability, pulling out during breaks, to use a few minutes and such. So it's good for a quick being able to save and put away that. It's not a mind-blowing game, as I said. It doesn't have anything too unique or anything, but it, it, is a, it is a bit different from the norm with Japanese RPGs with no level system and having to use items to improve your characters with their equipment. But if you're going to sit for long sessions, it's probably going to get old real fast. I, I would recommend it in short bursts, personally. I, this was one of the games I played while on breaks at work. And it worked out just fine for that. I beat the whole thing's original storyline that way. So, if you're looking for something for short bursts, I think it is a game that can cure your ails though. Should it replace you playing Persona 5 or Neo Automata? No. No. Shouldn't replace that. But, it's a pretty cheap game to get loose, so... Obviously, it's not 60 bucks of that, so... There's that going for it, too. So, those are my recommendations. I did enjoy it overall. So, at this point, let's go into spoilers. Not that there's really much to talk about there. I mean, like I said, the story is pretty dry, at least in the Atlas version, with a few moments that uh, were a little gigglish. But uh, the shovels and the, the main character is probably one of the most... I, I don't even know, like, soulless type Japanese RPG heroes I've ever seen in a long time. And the female companion is, like, in denial, like, in a weird denial, but I like you and want to marry you in the future kind of thing. Like, there's a scene near the end that's actually funny to me where she's like, let's have a group. Uh, let's have a family meeting and then he's like but we're not a family and then she's like oh but if we get married then we'll be a family and then he's like um. <laughs> but um essentially you'll have different crises that will affect the town or the male will have stupid ideas to make money to send you on and eventually you'll get to a point where the demon prince decides he wants to use your dungeon as his basis of world domination for the world 
Then you kick his ass, quits happen, and then his father is pissed that you killed his son. And he decides he's going to destroy the Italian fucking wall because of it. So you build your dungeon even deeper to get to him and kick his ass, and there you go, that's... So, you know, nothing mind-blowing or complicated, not like some giant trying to solve the inner, deeper meaning of Kingdom Hearts convoluted what the fuck is going on now. It's just very simple. Basic. If it had some better artwork and some good music to go with it, I think it'd probably be a vastly more memorable title, but it works, it functions, and it's not broken or anything, so... Like I said, it's good for trips, short bursts, and things. But I wouldn't say it's going to replace, uh, like, I'm going to sit down and play it for five hours straight. But I do recommend checking it out if you have original DS. It's cheap enough, like I said. So if you feel like you want something unique and nice or new or just something interesting, please feel free to leave a like. And if you think this slog of a review showed you nothing, feel free to leave a dislike. Thank you for joining. Until next time on the Proving Grounds, to the lose.